Today we are making crispy tofu and mushroom tacos with a pickled jalapeno and apple slaw. It is light and refreshing from the slaw. I am gonna add a little dollop of yogurt on top so you get that creamy lusciousness, but the tofu and the mushrooms underneath are spiced and crisp, really just meaty tasting, even though they are mushrooms and tofu. So it is a light, but endlessly satisfying and delicious lunch, dinner, you call it. Um, I love a taco. Pretty much haven't met a taco I didn't like. And I obviously eat everything, but many members of my family are vegetarians. So when we do our sort of taco spreads, we will always have a delicious variety of vegetable only offerings um, or tofu offerings. We are gonna be using a bounty of mushrooms. Mushrooms, one of my favorite foods. The variety of them, the medicinal quality of them. Mushrooms are the mighty vegetable that, or fungi, that can literally create vitamin D for you, which is so cool. And we are gonna be using shiitake mushrooms, really nice, delicious flavor. My taki mushrooms, which are these sort of hen of the woods style mushroom that have these great little textural pieces up here that get nice and crisp. And then we also have oyster mushrooms and these are really soft and melty. They get very luscious tasting. So we have juiciness, we have crispness, we have lots of flavor, doing it up. And then, what pray tell is happening back here? This is our tofu press. So I took a block of extra firm tofu, wrapped it in, in a paper towel, and then you just stack it between two plates and find a bunch of cans, or in my case, I'm using my utensil container because you just want to weight it down and let it hang out for half an hour. And what that's doing is drawing out any of the excess moisture so you get the most crisp and densely packed piece of tofu possible, which is lovely. It's been about half an hour um, of pressing. And you know, a lot of this stuff is really just like, do what you can. If you have half an hour to let your tofu soak, amazing. If you have to do a little faster, that's okay too. Look at all this moisture that came out of my tofu. That's what you want to be rid of. And now we're just gonna cut um, our tofu into like bite-sized pieces. I'm just gonna slice the tofu into these one inch thick kind of bricks and then stack two on top of each other and work down again um, into strips about what, one inch across. So that should give you maybe four from each block. And then once more down the center so you get lovely evenly sized cubes of extra firm tofu. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Tofu has no flavor, let's be real has no flavor at all. It tastes like styrofoam, but I love it. Great source of protein. And because it has no flavor, it will take on anything I surround it with, which in our case is gonna be some sriracha, a little honey, and a little avocado oil. For our tofu marinade, we're gonna take a quarter cup of sriracha plus, let's do, let's do two teaspoons of honey. We don't want super sweet, but just a nice little hit there. Let's do a nice pinch of salt. Let's do a hit of avocado oil. And avocado oil is a really nice neutral, about a tablespoon, really nice neutral oil, high smoke point, because these are gonna go into a 450 degree oven to really crisp up and get nice and golden brown. The sriracha has so much flavor and I'm gonna keep it simple on this. I was gonna add some other spices, but we don't need it. That is the other beauty of sriracha. It really just does it all. And then just toss your beautifully pressed cubes of tofu in. And I'm not gonna recommend that you do this with your hands because I think you will have a very hard time ever getting the heat off of your hands. So use a wooden spoon to gently toss and coat every piece of tofu on all sides. Try not to break up your cubes, they are delicate, but this is the extra firm tofu so it holds together pretty well. Okay, set that to the side. Also, sorry, one other thing, sriracha and honey, fabulous, fabulous combo. Um, I'm gonna let that marinate like at least 10 minutes. If you have longer, great. Let's see, depends how much talking I do. If I don't talk too much, it'll go 10 minutes. If I talk more, it might last a little longer. Um, let's talk mushrooms. So basically to prepare these mushrooms, remember guys, you never, ever, ever wanna soak your mushrooms. Don't submerge them in water. I just took a damp paper towel and kind of rubbed it over the surface of the mushrooms to loosen off any dirt that might be there. But um, soaking it in water or really giving mushrooms a proper rinse, it, it dilutes their flavor because they, they drink up that water and then 
That's a problem. All I'm going to do is take off the stems of these shiitake mushrooms and just break the caps apart. So these are already really small, nice little beautiful, delicate caps. They don't need a knife. They don't need to be finely chopped or anything. I want them to maintain um, enough heft that they keep wonderful texture and bite and chew even after a nice long roast in a hot oven. And I kind of love anything I can do by hand where I don't need to, um, you know, worry about being too precise, obviously. But I especially love when you tear bread apart by hand, when you tear mushrooms apart by hand, you're left with these kind of like craggy edges that I just find add extra surface area for your flavor to attach. So I have a nice big pile of the shiitake mushrooms. I am gonna do the same thing, working my way through the other varieties of mushroom. Um, if there were big woody stems, I would trim them off, but there aren't. Primarily, I'm just gonna be breaking apart these sort of more lovely and large clusters. These look pretty good. And honestly, oyster mushrooms are so delicate, you really don't need to break this apart too much. Same thing with these maitake. We don't want them to burn and char. We just want everything to cook evenly. Okay, mushrooms are ready. So grab a bowl and what you wanna do actually before we toss these mushrooms is season your avocado oil. So take two to three tablespoons of avocado oil with, I've been a little bit more, just a little bit more than two to three tablespoons. Um, a nice pinch of salt. The salt helps to draw the moisture out of your mushrooms and make sure they get really nice and crisp. And then I'm doing a teaspoon of ground cumin and a quarter to a half a teaspoon of ground chili powder. And that is going to, yes, give us some heat, which if you don't like, you can feel free to leave off. You could add curry powder. You could add like sweeter sort of types of seasonings like cinnamon and cardamom. Um, you could stick with just cumin and some garlic powder if you wanted to. Ooh, on onion powder could be, onion powder could be good. And I have some, onion powder could be good. I, I When I roast veg, I really love to add onion powder in. So let's do a teaspoon of that um, because it sweetens. It really caramelizes as they cook and gets so delicious. Um, for this, if I hadn't gotten my whisk dirty already, I would have used it. Let me just, let me just whisk this mix up and give it a quick taste. Make sure we have enough salt in here. Mmm, mmm, lovely. Into the bath, all your mushrooms. And for this, because they are a little bit more like nooks and cranny kind of situation in here, I am gonna use my hands because I do wanna just make sure they get Nice and coated beautifully. Oh, come and see. Look at this bounty of the wood. <laughs> Love this. And the mushrooms really drink up that oil. They take on the spices, coating every little side and corner of the mushroom pieces that we lovingly tore apart. Okay, beautiful. That's all you need to do. Wash your hands quickly. So now that our meaty style fillings are nice and marinated, ready to go. We're gonna grab two baking sheets. One is going to get parchment lined and that is for the uh, tofu because it is gonna get a little bit sticky from that honey. So to spare yourself the cleanup and to make sure that everything lifts off beautifully, I do like to parchment line this sheet. And then the second sheet is already in the oven, getting piping hot so that when we toss the well-greased, frisky little mushrooms onto the tray, it should sizzle. We should definitely hear some heat spark. And uh, that's how we know we're in business. Just lay that down, add your sriracha and honey-coated little cubes of tofu onto your sheet tray, leaving no sauce behind. And by the way, I know this is gonna sound completely insane, but if you are not someone who likes heat, but you still want a little bit of that kind of like sticky barbecue-iness to your tofu, try it with barbecue sauce. You can even try it with ketchup. You can literally just like doctor ketchup up with um, some spices. You can use cumin, you can use coriander, you could use uh, garlic powder, onion powder, things like that. Fresh thyme, delightful. Um, I'm not, a, I'm not above using ketchup in that way. I coat my meatloaf with ketchup all the time. It's glorious. So definitely try that if you're not so much a fan of the heat. If you want to go even spicier, puree a chipotle and adobo into your sriracha sauce. It is a no man's land cuisine combining lots of different elements 
but it's delicious and smoky, like has a really nice smoky heat to it. Um, okay, just wanna spread your tofu out into an even single layer and then get something to hold a hot pan with. Let's get it out of the oven. Oh yeah, woo, smoking hot. Oh my gosh, you guys love to see how truly well loved my um, sheet trays are, but listen for this. Do you hear the sound of happily crisping and frying and ready to roast mushrooms? Okay. Mushrooms in the middle, tofu on the bottom rack, and we are going to let these roast, let's call it like 25 to 30 minutes, then we'll start testing and checking them. But halfway through, we're gonna flip those, rotate front to back and top to bottom so that they're roasting evenly. So while our mushrooms and tofu roast in the oven, let's make our quick pickled jalapeno and apple slaw. Um, I'm pickling the jalapenos because it does add like a nice little acidic pop into the slaw. It keeps them really juicy. It does diffuse the heat a little bit. I find that um, they're still spicy, they're jalapenos, but they're not like, what, you know? Um, and you could have some pickled and some raw, which would be lovely, but I only have two jalapenos today, so I'm doing them all pickled. What you wanna do to create your sort of quick pickling liquid is heat up a half a cup of rice wine vinegar, which is a super mild, um, you know, very, ju just basically kind of acid tasting, not a lot of other flavor to it. Apple cider vinegar works great here too. White wine vinegar is fine, but I wouldn't go with like a balsamic or something like that. You want just pretty much straight, simple acid. That's all we're looking for. Um, and then you want to give it a little bit of sweetness with about a tablespoon of honey. And of course, you wouldn't be pickling without a nice solid teaspoon potentially a little bit more of kosher salt. And then, because I know I have them, and I do think they're gonna go really nicely here, I'm gonna find some coriander seed. I got it. I knew I had her. <laughs> just like a teaspoon of coriander seed, nothing crazy. And they just kind of bloom into the mix, give it a nice little flavor. They do um, soften ever so slightly because the vinegar gets hot. And then when you bite into them, they're just little gentle pops, nothing too crazy. I'm gonna add a splash more rice wine vinegar because it is heating up fast and I need time to cut the jalapenos. We will also be using this vinegar, which will be scented with the coriander, the salt, the honey, and the jalapeno to make our vinaigrette. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a quick ring slice on our jalapenos. And I'm making them a little bit thin. I don't want them to fall apart, but I do want every bite that we get in the slaw to be a pleasurable hit of heat and not an extravagant, extra thick slice of jalapeno. And then straight into that lovely hot bath of vinegar and honey. Just give that a quick swirl so that everything's getting nice and coated. And then I let it heat for one minute Take it off the heat and let it sit and cool down for 10 minutes. That will let the uh, pepper soften, infuse into the vinegar, get nice and quick pickled. So just after it comes up to a simmer, take it off the heat, give it one last swish, and then let it sit and cool for 10 minutes while I make the rest of the slaw. So this is a very crunchy, flavorful, and nicely sort of juicifying slaw to go with our mushroom and, to and tofu combo. It's gonna have green cabbage in it, which obviously is just nice and, and hearty and filling. But I'm also gonna add some Granny Smith apples in, which is an amazing way to add more crunch, yes, but a little like sweet tart hit, which I think goes so nicely in the slaw. I am gonna cut these into fine matchsticks so that you get kind of like the same sensation as the cabbage, but then you're surprised. Then you're like, ooh, it's sweet. Um, I'm gonna cut the apples last because they brown the fastest, so I quickly wanna toss them with our vinegar to slow that browning process down, um, which means I will start with our cabbage. You have the core here at the bottom of the cabbage, so I just slice straight down through that using your muscles. <laughs> and we ultimately want about two cups of thinly shredded cabbage. Um, I just peel off the outer layer, which has a tendency to be wilted and dried out a little bit. So we want only the fresh green tenderness inside. I'm gonna go ahead and slice a V 
down through the core to remove it. And then you are left with just this lovely hunk of vegetable. Slice it in half again. And then you can kind of just slowly work your way through slicing these thin shreds of cabbage that are going to be nicely bite-sized and fit snugly into your tofu and mushroom taco. And try to be as thin and precise as you can because the thinner the cabbage is, the better it takes on the flavor of the dressing. And you want this to be maximally punchy flavor. It's obviously delicious right when you make it, but if you can let it sit 30 minutes, an hour, a little longer, it will really soak up the juiciness of this sort of vinaigrette combo we're doing on top. And then as you get to the sort of tough base piece, you can flip it down and just quickly work your way through. Lovely. Mmm. Crunchy. Okay, I'm gonna do this one quickly. Oh, sweet. Mmm. Second half, same as we just did. Next, let's do some scallions. We need that nice little oniony component. And you just wanna peel off that sort of, it can be a little sort of filmy top layer so that your scallion is nice and clean and ready to work with. I'm gonna do four scallions for this amount of cabbage. Um, so you have plenty of flavor throughout. See, you wanna just peel that whole little strip off. Once um, your scallions are nice and prepped, the tops will look like so, line them up and slice them away. And then just put a really thin, nice slice on your scallions. Again, the point of the thin slice is to make sure that a, it can distribute really quickly and nicely thoroughly throughout the salad. And also so you never get a huge bite of onion flavor. You just want that essence coming through. And I take it all the way up through these dark green pieces. No reason to waste them. They have tons of great flavor. They are still tender. Probably stop about an inch from the top for most of them. And the two that I missed are just too bad for them. Into your bowl. Mmm, and look how vibrant and green this is gonna look, plus those jalapenos that are cooling on the back over there. I am gonna add some fresh mint, which I also love to bring just a bit of freshness to this. An unexpected herb to find, I think, you in most um, slaws. It can be a little bit overwhelming, so I'm not gonna do a ton. Maybe just about a tablespoon of pulled leaves and I am gonna put a really thin slice on them. It'll just freshen up our whole slaw situation. It has been 15 minutes, so let's flip our trays really quickly before we move on with the slaw. Ooh, it's happening. Look at this, look at this. Look at how lovely and brown and softened up and shrunken down our mushrooms are getting. As they release their liquid, they do. They, it looked like a lot of mushrooms when we started, but um, they are gonna shrink down ever so slightly. So that I don't remove all of the heat from our oven, I'm gonna pull these out and give everything a quick little toss. Just little to tofu cubes. Oh yeah, look at that golden browning happening. That's why we wanted that parchment paper here so that all of that stays on the cubes, does not get left behind on your tray. Once most of them are nice and flipped over. Oh my gosh, okay, if you have sensitive fingers, do not attempt this. <laughs> Probably don't attempt this at all. Just go ahead and use your spatula, but I am working fast for you today. But you can see how lovely and golden brown these are getting already. Really nice texture on these and still plenty juicy. We left them large enough that we still are getting a really nice soft tofu underbelly to our crisp and gloriously flavored surface. Okay, these are ready to go. Okay, move everything over. Move it all to the center, right? Like so and then just bring it all back around. That way you make sure everything has gotten roughly nice and tossed and redistributed with a quick little shake of the pan. Woo back to the oven, back to the slaw. We did our mint. Now let's do some fresh cilantro. And for this, I'm just gonna roughly tear these nice big leaves and the tender stems at the top into our slaw. Nothing too precise here, just a little whimsical addition of a fresh herb. And you can go ahead and save these stems, by the way, if you're a juicer, juice the stems, add in that little boost of um, cilantro flavor and freshness and um, benefit. I have to say, 
for a very long time, I was not a big fan of um, cilantro by any stretch of the imagination. And I slowly have developed something of a taste for it. I'm not going to say I like opt for it, but in guacamole, I like it a lot now. And in slaws like so, where it just adds the perfect little boost of almost like a lettuce component to a salad. It adds that nice greenness. That's what I want. And if you are lucky enough to have very fine tender stems, which I do have here, you can, to add a little extra crunch and texture on the slaw, just give them a quick little mince. And these nice little crunchy pieces add so much flavor right into our mix. Granny Smith, underrated apple, so nice and sweet tart. And the way you're gonna do these kind of thin matchstick cuts it's first sliced down into rounds. You could peel this if you wanted to, but I kind of want to leave the skin on um, for a bit of color. I might just discard this little end piece that's mostly skin. And um, I like that it adds a little color and I like that it adds a little structure to our apple pieces as well. And then you just wanna slice down into thin, even, beautiful little matchsticks that blend perfectly in with our cabbage. Same thing on the other side. And if you went a little close to the core, just go ahead and slice that guy out. And then same thing on these. Beautiful. Before I get to the second apple, I am just gonna take a lime and quickly juice it over the apples I've already added. And hopefully that acid component will help prevent them from browning too quickly. But that is why we did the apples last so that we can quickly get them doused in a bit of vinegar. Look at those. Okay, the mushrooms are done about 25 minutes in. They will be finished just slightly before the tofu. You'll know they're done because there will be some pieces that are really crisp and golden brown, like especially these edges here, gorgeous, and everything is tender. Mmm. Mmm. Tender, flavorful, still has really nice, really nice chew and meatiness on it. And we'll let the we'll let the tofu go just a few minutes more. At this point, we are ready to dress. Let's go ahead and add that second half of the lime. And you guys know the little fork trick. If your lime is not giving up its juice well, or any citrus is not, just go ahead and stab a fork in there, being careful not to accidentally stab your hand, and then pinch and wiggle to break out all those juices hiding in there. Now we want to have not forgotten about our beautiful pickled jalapeno. Let's taste one, shall we? Mmm, mmm. Soaked up that acidity, really muted out the heat, that little bit of honey coming in, those pops of coriander seed. You ultimately want about a quarter cup of vinegar left over. And if you have that, you can go ahead and add every last drop over your slaw. And I'm adding all the jalapenos too, but if you wanna take the heat down a little, go ahead and leave a few out. They're really not that hot anymore though. I don't know if it's because we started with less hot jalapenos or just because the pickling took it down completely, but they're much more pickly than heat at this point. A little olive oil or avocado oil. Avocado oil actually I'll use because it's nice and a little bit more neutral and will help just coat everything up and keep it nice and flavorful. Okay, let's give it a quick toss. Make sure all those herbs and the scallions and the jalapenos the cabbage, all that nice vinegar and the coriander seeds. Am I missing anything? <laughs> Get mixed together. Um, that's really good. That is really good. Limey, little, that jalapeno, it's like, it just like pops in your mouth. Plenty of things to chew on with the cabbage and the apple, all those fresh herbs, delightful. Check out our golden brown tofu. Mmm. So nice. Mmm. 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 -mm. A little sweet, spicy pop on the surface. 
be lying that tender center. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's make tacos. Now, if you were getting ready for a little taco night, go ahead and just arrange your beautiful piles of crisp, tender mushrooms. Look at this, by the way, guys, because you let them cool for a second on the pan. Nothing steamed. Everything stayed really nice and tender. You have beautiful golden brown crispness on the edges, especially. So delicious. If you're having guests, don't touch all their food like I just did. <laughs> but... My family's used to it by now. And then same thing on our tofu. Easily slides down. You just pile it up on the plate. So for the finishing touch, we are going to char some tortillas over an open flame. You can use, I'm using almond flour tortillas today, chickpea flour tortillas, cassava, regular tortillas, whatever you like. Just grab yourself some tongs and an open flame. Go ahead and let it sit over an open flame 15 seconds, 20 seconds. You'll see it's going to start to get nice char marks. You'll start to see a little sizzle. It's softening up and getting these nice little golden browning areas. Taco party for one. <laughs> And giving it this nice little char does just make it more pliable and soft. So it will wrap itself around all that yummy, flavorful filling that we created. Gorgeous golden brown charring. Now, while it's still warm, this is the move, okay? Grab yourself some yogurt. I have a little sheep's milk yogurt here that you just want to dollop. A little too much there. Dollop into the center and give a quick spread. And that just creates a gorgeous little cloud to catch the juices from the mushrooms and the tofu and the slaw. A little bit of your mushroom mix. And of course you could do all of one, all of the other if you prefer. A few cubes of tofu dotting their way along. Let's go for four. So every bite gets a little taste. Some of your magnificent pickled jalapeno and apple slaw. Oh, give me a break right now. A fresh squeeze of lime juice right over top. And then we take a bite. <laughs> oh my goodness. Flavorful, fresh filling, wondrously light. But who's even thinking about that right now? Not me. Not me. I'm about to have a taco. Not me. Mm. Mm. Tacos, like salad, were not made for eating on TV. They were made for eating luxuriously in the privacy of your own home or surrounded by friends who are also messily eating tacos because they are just so fun to eat, so flavorful, and a little bit messy, obviously. This, my friends, is a divine bite. The mushrooms and the tofu have so much flavor thanks to our nice long roast with all those great spices and that little bit of heat from the sriracha and some honey. Really meaty tasting, so flavorful with, that addition, with the addition of the really citrusy, vibrant, juicy slaw. That was quite simple. Our beautifully pliable wrap, tucking it all together in one neat little bite. Not eat it all, one messy giant crazy little bite. It's so freaking delicious. Oh, the apple, the apple guys. Don't miss it. It's a game changer. That looks like chicken. It's not, it's tofu. I think I've talked my mouthful more in this video than any other because I can't stop eating these delicious crispy mushroom and tofu tacos with pickled jalapeno and apple slaw. And that's why you should make them immediately.